नमस्कार लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन ए वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम टू कैनाडा इंडिया फाउंडेशन फोर्टींथ सेशन ऑफ अवर वर्चुअल वेबिनार स्पीकर सीरीज ऑन आयुर्वेदा फ्रेंड्स अवर स्पेशल गेस्ट ऑफ दिस मॉर्निंग इज लोगन कनपति मेंबर ऑफ प्रोविंशियल पार्लियामेंट ऑन थेरियो एम पी वी कनपति इज वेल नोन फॉर हिज इनक्रेडिबल वर्क इन पब्लिक सर्विस and uh, he will be joining shortly uh, sorry for the uh, bit delay in in logging in this morning due to some uh, technical issue and uh, our expert speaker of this morning as you all know is vaidya sanjay kulkarni he will educate us on ayurveda management of metabolic syndrome uh, welcome sanjay ji uh, friends uh, metabolic syndrome is a complex uh, disorder consisting of central obesity hyperglycemia uh, hypertension and hyperlipidemia obesity metabolic syndrome and diabetes uh, mellitus are increasing uh, to the epidemic proportion uh, globally and there are close to 650 million clinically uh, obese adult worldwide as per who report 2020 and there are more than 422 million people who have diabetes the global impact of these disorders is immense in terms of human suffering and economic burden and the objective of today's session is to evaluate and know the efficacy and safety of ayurveda in the management of metabolic syndrome uh, this ayurvedic lecture series is in partnership as you all know with the canadian ayurvedic practitioners association a uh, consul general of india in toronto and vedic spiritual heritage uh, foundation and uh, before we begin of course we are waiting still waiting for our special guest he might be joining uh, i think a bit late so as soon as he joins we'll we'll welcome him but before that i think i would uh, now pass on to dr uh, sanjay kulkarni uh, who is a an ayurveda physician consultant teacher and panchkarma specialist with over 35 years of clinical and teaching experience he specializes in ayurvedic uh, pulse diagnosis and he has worked in usa as an ayurvedic consultant and panchkarma specialist he was honored with the maharishi award in 1999 in usa and for the last decade and a half dr kulkarni has traveled to various countries to spread awareness on ayurveda by participating through various seminars and lectures he and his wife shruti have been running ayurveda panchkarma specialty clinic and shruti international ayurvedic academy at pune and he specializes in training uh, treating metabolic syndrome as well as reversal of type 2 diabetes with the help of panchkarma lifestyle and dietary modification a very warm welcome uh, vaidya sanjay ji and we look forward to your presentation over to you sir thank you very much so thank you very much uh, to everyone uh, honorable mr logan canada india foundation consulate general of india satish thakkar ji dr harish sharma ji ritesh malik ji and dr sanjay chajit ji and all the members of the canada india foundation it's really an honor to share the knowledge on this platform and uh, today's my subject is also very interesting as when we discussed with uh, uh, dr harish sharma ji and so this is uh, really like an epidemic nowadays but now how to actually evaluate how one can understand that some symptoms are already accumulating in my physiology as a common man how we can detect it and how we can address it practically with a very simple simple things and that's what actually we are going to see so i will start my presentation right now <clears throat> so this is uh, my clinic shruti ayurved panchakarma speciality clinic uh, together my wife dr anjani kulkarni and uh, dr uh, shubhankar kulkarni we are running this uh, we have a panchakarma clinic over here in pune uh, today's subject is ayurveda management of metabolic syndrome 
so nowadays there are so many uh, actually uh, treatments or so many uh, medicines and so many pathies are working on this particular burning issue nowadays because when we are thinking about uh, metabolic syndrome it's really a cluster of the symptoms really would like to say it's a cluster of symptoms and not the disease why that i'm going to say you a little bit later uh, i would start with this this is a very beautiful maharshi patanjali yoga sutra it says heyam dukham anagatam it is from sec- second chapter and 16th verse it says i word the danger before it arrives and i think it applies to each and every disorder or the diseases so everybody needs to see how one can avoid the danger or avoid the danger before it arrives and is there any, is there any answer for that yes there is an answer in ayurveda that you can certainly avoid the things which are coming forth now of course i will not spend much more time on this tridosha these are the basic governing principle in our physiology vata pitta and kapha everybody knows that but i am showing this because the middle one the pitta one which is here and this is the fire and this fire is much much more important in our physiology as well as in the universe because these three doshas are representing the three three governing principles in the universe that is sun moon and wind so sun is represented for pitta and we need to take care the relationship of that pitta and the sun so we generally say we are a part of the nature and nature is a part of the us so there should be a direct link to the nature so we should get directly connected to the nature and that's why we have to respect the nature and then we have to follow the nature or the natural law very uh, <clears throat> different definition of the healthy individual in ayurveda you might have heard in previous lectures too and this definition is so profound it says that your doshas vata pitta and kapha should be in normal state or balanced state your agni should be normal this is the most most important because the whole uh, metabolic syndrome is actually around the agni if the agni is deteriorated the metabolic syndrome starts to arrive we will see it a little bit later then all the dhatus all the tissues all the seven tissues which i am going to uh, just mention now these tissues are also involved when we are thinking about the metabolic syndrome so they should be in normal and balanced condition then balanced release of excretory product that is urine feces and sweat but when you are saying okay all my blood parameters are normal everything is normal i don't have any pain or aches or anything so i am really the healthy person but i would say wet unless and until you have blissful state of mind sense organs and consciousness if you have these things are in the blissful state then only you are said to be the healthy person anything disturbed into this that will create problem with the agni let me tell you one important thing that if each and everything is affecting agni in our physiology agni means the digestive fire any i mean even on mental level on the physical level also any emotion upset will distinguish the fire and that's why we have to be very very uh, paying attention towards the agni now here as we are saying the agni the digestive fire according to the ayurveda agni is responsible for everything so basically it is the transformative metabolic process that means whatever you eat for example the food you eat for what purpose you eat you eat it because you need to get the nourishment so when you eat bread vegetables fruits or whatever it is so you are expected that this all nourishment should turn to develop our tissues the nourished our tissues like plasma blood muscle muscle fat bone bone marrow all these things so this agni is very important and that's why it has been said here a vitiated agni is the cause of all the diseases in fact 
if there is one verse in ayurveda it has been said if your agni is distinguished the person dies and that's why the most important part is agni now functions and importance of agni now if you look at this you will understand the importance of this digestive fire so all our life span complexion strength health enthusiasm corpulence lusture immunity this is most important because on the scenario of this pandemic event we have to have this immunity and that's why we need to look into the state of our agni how that agni is working if it is not working well then you have to be concerned if a person is saying i am not getting appetite it is a big concern then it also gives you energy it gives you heat processes and most important the prana that is the vital breath and that's why proper maintenance of this agni to a longer and healthy life is very very important now how to maintain this agni that also we have to see as i have mentioned seven tissues we have of course as a, it is a repetition because uh, so many people all the distinguished speaker before me they uh, have emphasized on this that we have seven tissues like plasma blood muscle muscle and fat bone bone marrow reproductive tissue and the final product comes is the ojas now briefly i would like to say a little bit more on this part actually when we eat any kind of food then that is transformed into two parts one is the essence part and another is the waste product so that essence part which we call ahara rasa that goes and form the first tissue that is the plasma or the rasa tissue what we say is extremely important because the health of that plasma tissue or the rasa tissue is important because all the other successive tissues as we are seeing here blood muscle fat bone bone marrow reproductive tissue is depending on this particular part that is the rasa tissue it's very interesting now when we are talking about agni i am really talking agni and agni and agni today because our in ayurveda we say 13 types of agnis are there but first agni is the main agni which is sitting in the stomach which we call jatara agni forget about the sanskrit term but this main agni is really governing all the agnis and in fact it is very interesting and this concept is very unique in ayurveda no pathy is focusing on this ayurveda says that plasma and all these tissues are having their own digestive fire so whatever the food essence goes to them their agni is working on that and gets the nourishment so when rasa dhatu is formed the ahara rasa or the essence part of the food goes to that first tissue then the agni of that rasa dhatu is working on that and then it is formed to the next tissue is the blood tissue and this is how the sequential progression of these tissues is going on and then finally the essence part is remained after formation of all the tissues and that is called the ojas which is the most essence part so this is how this agni is so important for us and i just uh, explained you this sequential progression of the metabolism of these seven tissues that is from rasa when agni is working that rasa agni is working on that uh, essence part of the food that is the ahar rasa then the blood tissue form then the blood has its own digestive fire it works on it and then it forms the muscle tissue so this is how sequentially it is going on and that's how it is developed now you need to know if whatever food we eat and if our agni is or our main digestive fire is weak then definitely the nourishment of all these tissues are not going well at the same time the final product of all formation of these tissues at the end which we call ojas or you can say immunity will be not developing well or weak immunity and that weak immunity is susceptible to most of the diseases 
sometimes people say oh i do really follow very good uh, uh, guidelines i eat very sattvic food i eat light food i don't eat much much more but still why i am getting the problem the problem is of your agni even though you are getting the sattvic food even though you are getting world's best quality organic food but still if your agni is not working well then it is going to develop the weak immunity and then you are more susceptible to the infection so these tissues are having a particular functions in our physiology for example this first tissue is there is a tissue is for nourishment and this is extremely important let me uh, share one thing with you before we go ahead uh, if rasa tissue is weak then generally it is one of the main reason of formation of the heart disease now you can connect if your agni or main digestive fire is weak then naturally this your rasa tissue or the plasma tissue will be weak and that is going to hamper your heart health or your heart will be at compromised stage next is blood maintenance of life activity muscle is for enlarging or covering maida that means the fat tissue is for lubrication asthi that is the bone tissue is for supporting majja that is the bone marrow it's for filling and the shukra which is the production of the embryo now this is our main subject which i would like to just go in uh this is very vast subject i know i have to cover it a lot of time uh i mean it's a very short time but still i will try my level best to cover everything what is metabolic syndrome metabolic syndrome as variously known as syndrome x because they don't know the reason then insulin resistance so there are many things which who has said as a pathological conditions now what pathological conditions here mention in this by who is abdominal obesity insulin resistance hypertension and hyperlipidemia if you see of course we are going to see now each and everything if you see all these things are really up nothing but the weak agni or the weak digestive fire so if we have to treat this we have to treat first the digestive fire if we are going to treat only the symptoms then that is not useful at all and that's why we generally have to focus on this particular part of course there is a lot of confusion the main two question always arises is it possible to prevent metabolic syndrome and is it possible to cure the metabolic syndrome the first answer is it possible to prevent metabolic syndrome with ayurveda and yoga it is certainly possible to prevent this metabolic syndrome as we have said avert the danger before it arrives it is possible then is it possible to cure the metabolic syndrome the answer is it is completely individualized if it is in early stages then yes it is possible to cure it but if lot of complications are happening then it goes into a completely deeper and individualized aspect now as uh, we have shown here the figure it's a lot of confusion where we have to go right left or you uh, you turn or whatever it is but the confirm answer if we will like to say is really ayurveda and yoga has a very good answer in this now this is the term came into the medical text first time in 1998 and according to the who the oral prevalence of the metabolic syndrome is 63.58 it was published in 2017 and of course according to the research gate the overall estimate in adults is 20 to 25% of course it varies according to the country and the regional variations now the first thing abdominal obesity now when uh, we are saying the abdominal obesity immediately you just uh, can see nowadays if you look at common people there are many people we see that they are having this big belly really they don't know how really they are harming their agni or the digestive fire in this figure i have shown here 
two fat, two kind of fat it is mentioned, subcutaneous fat, which is below the skin, and there is a visceral fat. This is the most dangerous fat, has been explained in modern medicine a lot, which is surrounding the organs. Especially if this visceral fat is surrounded around the liver and the pancreas, that is the most dangerous condition, especially with the liver. Again, when I am saying about this, we are also mentioning that being overweight, experiencing too much stress, drinking alcohol, not sleeping enough, insulin resistance, and eating processed food. Extremely important eating processed food. It is so common nowadays Everybody is just jumping on the processed food and all the uh, fat food and junk food. So this is responsible to create the inflammation in the physiology. And remember one thing, all the diseases, not only the metabolic syndrome I'm talking about, but most of the diseases, the main cause in our physiology is nothing but the inflammation. Now, the question comes, how we should reduce this inflammation or which things are causing the inflammation in our body? Because this inflammation is responsible to store this visceral, visceral fat. There is one another thing I would like to mention before I go ahead is not only necessary that a person is having big belly will have only the visceral fat, but the thin person would also be having the visceral fat. And that is more dangerous. Now the next thing is hypertension or the blood, blood pressure. It is nothing but the long-term force of the blood against the artery wall. Here one thing again, the, why the blood pressure is rising up. Of course, everything is interlinked to each other. So it is directly related to the accumulation of the toxins you may call cholesterol. It is possible but it is directly linked to the inflammation and the inflammation is linked to the indigestion and the indigestion is more linked to the digestive fire. So one has to really follow the digestive fire. There is one ex extra thing I have mentioned on the screen, excess amount of water is not good because a lot of people are having this habit of drinking a lot of unnecessary water. Of course, you have to have some water which is necessary for your uh, physiological functioning. So I would say like two, two and a half liter of water. Yes, it is necessary. But many people, especially I have seen in the waste that they drink a lot of water. Let me share you one experience. Last year I had one patient. He came, uh, his uh, relatives take him to the clinic and he was not able to walk. He had a lot of cramps in his calf muscle and he was dizzy. And he was just 58 years old. So I just asked the history and he mentioned he drank five liters of water. So naturally the blood pressure when it was uh, seen, it was 210 by 100. So the question is that now how we can treat this? There is no necessity of treating is when he pees, then obviously after urination, it goes down and the symptoms settles. But why the cramps and everything? Because the dilution of the sodium and potassium that gives the dizziness and the cramps. And that's how one has to be very careful, especially if you are carrying the high blood pressure, you have to be careful of not over drinking the water. Now hyperlipidemia. Of course, in uh, modern medicine, in this metabolic syndrome, they are saying, that triglyceride and HDL, these are the most important things because higher triglycerides and lower HDL is the main concern. As you can see here, there is a yellow plaque or accumulation of the cholesterol on the artery wall, which makes the lumen very short. And as the artery lumen is short, the flow of the blood is getting shorter and naturally it will get clot. So, Obviously, the patient maybe in the future would get stroke or heart attack and these things are happening very frequently. Now, what is really, again, the cause of this hyperlipidemia? Again, the answer is the same inflammation. Now, 
as here i have mentioned trans fat like eating mayonnaise eating brick bakery products you see how many people really are eating biscuits and cookies here and there cakes drinking coffee and tea all these things and most importantly the sugar let me share one thing first before we go ahead sugar is the most inflammatory product in our physiology that's why if you want to reduce the inflammation if you want to reduce the hyperlipidemia and all these things sugar needs to be reduced very interesting is insulin resistance of course here i have shown the glucose insulin cell and insulin resistance the other figure is there is a lock on the cell wall according to the modern science for example when we eat the food naturally it converts into the sugar sugar goes into the blood so as soon as it goes into the blood the insulin is always started to uh, produce by the uh, pancreas so it is secreted and the insulin takes out the blood sugar from the blood and it takes it to the cell where the insulin receptor opens and through the glucose channel it goes into the cell and the cell get energy now just imagine when you are eating the food unnecessary when you are not hungry but still you are eating 3 4 5 6 times a day no matter whether you are eating small thing or a big meal but when you are eating all this thing that means the food is converting into the glucose very frequently in your blood so sugar is there in the blood all the time so pancreas has to produce more and more insulin whereas cell is saying at the same time if you are sedentary if you are not working out if you are not having exercise then what happens that cell is saying i don't want now the glucose but the glucose is produced the insulin is there so more insulin and then the insulin resistance is developed very interestingly what we have to see in a, uh, here i have shown the picture of the pancreas if you see the pancreas what it has been said in ayurveda the name of a uh, pancreas in ayurveda in sanskrit is agnashay isn't it very interesting agnashay agni is the digestive fire and ashay means the seat house so it is the seat of the digestive fire so now you have to connect that each and every hormone may be insulin or even if we consider pcod or thyroid every hormone is nothing but the agni or the digestive fire and that's how we have to take care of each and everything now why what is insulin resistance in ayurveda as we have seen so it is nothing but the disturbed agni or deranged agni when agni is disturbed then everything all the hormones are completely working chaosly they are not working for what they should work so this is how the principle of ayurveda is really very important how we can keep this agni always lightened enlivened kindled how this is how we are going to see it's very beautifully explained here it is exactly all the translation here of the classical text i am just uh, giving here the text of the shloka the factors disturbing digestive fire too much of fasting eating during indigestion over eating irregular eating eat intake of unsuitable heavy cold dry and contaminated food here i would like to highlight one thing eat intake of unsuitable food that means for example if you know that if i would eat chocolate it creates a problem in me but still if you are eating that that is the intake of unsuitable food which will disturb the agni very small thing very small thing but it is going to disturb your agni then heavy cold dry contaminated food for example many people are really eating ice cream in this cold weather of course nowadays in canada you might be experiencing cold weather so eating ice cream in this cold weather will also disturb your agni then 
faulty administration of emesis purgation and oleation this is completely related to the panchakarma so i will not uh, more highlight on this in this then emaciation due to the diseases some diseases affect the agni and if for example some diseases like if you have fever your agni is distinguished and that's why in ayurveda we say if you have fever fever you have to have very light food like a kanji kanji means the rice broth really or a very um, uh, soupy like things for example example barley soup or something like that faulty adaptation of place time and season just i have mentioned eating ice cream in winter suppression of natural urges this is the uh, topic i am going to highlight a little bit more after this slide and here one important thing again coming as i had explained already agni does derange become unable to digest even the light food this is very important when your agni is disturbed then even the light food you eat that will convert into the toxin and that is being the undigested food is nothing but the acidic and toxic and that's why we have to be very very careful like in this pandemic situation many people are getting the fever fear uh, fever so this fever is nothing but the low agni because it is a symptom from our physiology now the next topic this is very important you can just see don't pretend even if you are in meditation if you are thinking of the food this will also disturb your agni because you are doing something else but still you are thinking of the food that means you are really trying to calm down your mind in the meditation but in the meditation also you are thinking oh i should get this type of cookies i should get this type of cake that will disturb your agni and that will not allow you to settle down your meditation now uh, the disease of diabetes now is diabetes is a disease or is high blood sugar is a disease this is also very interesting i have actually um, posted here the print copy the photo of the shloka whatever said the verses in charak sahita so the translation is that how really the diabetes happen or what are the common causes so addiction to the pleasure of sedentary habits you can just imagine this shloka is more more than 5000 years old but it is perfectly applicable even these days and all the modern research is coming to the same point which is already been there 5000 years before now the modern science is saying don't be sedentary you have to keep moving this is what ayurveda says then excessive sleep particularly nap nap should be avoided because excessive sleep brings the heaviness in the physiology and that disturb because it creates the mucus and this mucus is hampering the digestive fire which will create the toxins in the physiology because if your agni is at compromised state it will create the problems in the physiology that's why you have to avoid the nap yogurt one of the most important in ayurveda it has been said if you have diabetes or if you have a family history of diabetes you should avoid yogurt because yogurt has a very specific action mentioned in ayurveda it is said it is clogging effect so it clogs the channels and that's why it is not good then all meat and milk preparation so basically all animal products creates the inflammation which is now lot of research on the meat and everything is there you can look it in the google it creates that inflammation even with the milk provided if it is very good organic one then freshly harvested food article generally we say if you have diabetes then always use the old grains all or everything what you eat especially pulses and the grains it should be old one in india uh, it's a tradition you may be knowing many of you been, may be knowing that when uh, in the olden days people used to buy the grains and keep it at home and start using it after 6 months and the reason behind being is the uh, freshly harvested food has lot of water so it becomes heavy for the digestion 
So to become uh, light for the digestion, you have to keep it and then allow it to uh, stay there. So water content will be less and easy for digestion. Then freshly prepared alcohol drinks, even though it is said, but the, every alcohol drink is not at all advisable in diabetes. All preparation of jaggery, sugar, or basically all sweet, all sweetened beverages are not allowed and all kapha aggravating things. Now the natural urges, which I just had mentioned, of course, uh, I will make it a little bit more fast. So urges to the uh, uh, releasing gases, feces, urine, sneeze, thirst, hunger, sleep, cough, breathing on exertion, yawning, vomiting, semen, and tears. Here I would like to highlight only one or two because we don't have time. The tears, you just see, when a tear is coming out of the eyes and you just take it on your finger, you feel there is no weight to that tear. But the same tear, if you don't let it out, when it is sitting inside, the same tear will sit like a heavy rock on the heart, which will create the stress and that leads to the heart attack and it is very much proven with all modern researches. It's a very simple thing, very small thing, but very important. There is one another example before I go ahead. There is a sneezing. In Indian newspaper two years before, there was one news that one person from Holland, he suppressed his sneeze and he lost his voice. He was admitted in the hospital for two months and the doctor said he lost his voice forever. Simple thing, these are the natural instinct from the physiology that these things needs to go out. So it is a part of the nature and it is duty of us to let it out. And that's why, of course, when we are in meeting, then it is not a good manner of yawning and, uh, you know, uh, all other things. So that's why Ayurveda says you have to attend all these natural urges. Now, the more causes, excessive salty food, excessive sour food, excessive spicy food, excessive worry and grief. I just mentioned uh, earlier that each and every emotional upset will upset your main digestifier or your agni and will create or may responsible to create the metabolic syndrome. Excessive exercise, extremely important because this excessive exercise sometimes may cause injury. And it has happened. There are many examples that people died in the gym while working out. So Ayurveda says you have to have 50% of your capacity, the exercise, you should not do it more. And now the modern science is confirming through the research that if you would over exercise, that lead to the myocardial infarction. So modern science is now saying you have to do 150 minutes of your exercise for your uh, per week, not more than that. Even uh, American Heart Association is also saying that, or you have to do 75 minutes uh, good workout. That's what their guidelines say. But Ayurveda is already saying this uh, 5,000 years before all this principle. And what is the relation of this excessive exercise to the production of metabolic syndrome or causing the metabolic syndrome? The simple thing is that when you're over exercising, your sympathetic nervous system is getting stimulated, which stimulates the cortisol and other things, which creates the inflammation in the body or the adrenaline or the catecholamine. And this will lead to the problems with the hypertension and all other things. Anger, exposure to the sun. And here is one original research paper. It's published in 2016 that physical activity and anger or emotional upset as triggers of acute myocardial infarction, that is the heart attack. Now you can just imagine, Ayurveda has been saying this thing 5,000 years before, proving with the modern research. So here I have said, anything in excess should be avoided. So we have to have a mantra of limit. Everything should be in limit, whatever we eat, whatever we behave, whatever the exercise and everything. So excess sleep, we already discussed intake of heavy, then sweet, all cold food or unctuous or oily food, 
then day sleep and lack of exercise, these are responsible. Uh, main thing is that faulty diet, faulty daily routine, stress, smoking, drinking alcohol, and no exercise. These are the most important causes. This I would like to highlight a little bit. Uh, generally, if you know, Ayurveda is based on consciousness. This is the science based on consciousness. So you have to approach mind and body consciousness approach together. So if they are working together, then the perfect health will be there. But if there is a lack of coordination between mind, body and consciousness, then the manifestation of the diseases are happening, especially very serious disorders. Now, what is the pathogenesis according to Ayurveda if we imagine of metabolic syndrome? It is the improper diet, improper lifestyle, improper behavior, many, many things can include it here, which deranged the digestifier or affect the digestifier as we have seen before, which leads to the formation of the toxins, what we call ama in Ayurveda. And this ama is then manifest in the form of metabolic syndrome. It is not only the metabolic syndrome, but it can affect in many, many uh, diseases. Very interestingly, I'm starting a very uh, interesting and good topic and how a normal person, a layman can see if he or she is developing any toxins in the physiology or any chances of getting uh, metabolic syndrome. It is said in Ayurveda, of course, I will not read the verse. So blockages any kind of the blockages, any kind of pain, if the person is experiencing this thing, for example, very frequently getting common cold or running nose or allergies or any pain, any cramp, anything which is happening, that means something is wrong with your agni, which is creating the inflammation, which is leading to these symptoms. Even sometimes, not having any symptom of this, the person comes and explain, I don't know what is happening with me, but I feel something is blocked in my physiology. I don't know what is wrong, but something is blocked. That is the alarming sign that you have to take care of your Agni. Now deranged strength. So normally the person has good strength, but suddenly the strength is lost and the person is saying, oh, I'm losing my strength. Then heaviness, lot of heaviness. It's not only the physical, but also mental heaviness. Sometimes the person is saying, oh, I can't move. Generally, I'm not this type of personality, but I can't move nowadays. If this is happening very frequently, that means this is the sign of accumulation of toxin or building of the blockages in the physiology. Very important. Always digestive comfort. Getting gases, bloating very frequently. This is also alarming sign. Next is laziness. Beautifully explained. Shakti Karmani Anvatsa means your capacity to work is there, but there is no enthusiasm already. So if these things are happening, that means the accumulation of toxin or building the blockages are happening in your physiology. In between the food or after food, if you get this feeling like shown in this picture, that means the indigestion is happening. Your Agni is on the weaker side or your main digestifier is in the weaker side. This is also one of the symptoms has been explained that excessive salivation in the mouth, frequently spitting. This is very common. Sometimes patient actually says this. And if this is happening almost many days, many weeks, you can imagine that the Agni is getting weak and nothing, but this is the most important is the constipation. You cannot forget the constipation. Constipation, if ignored, can lead to the heart disease. Most important to attend this. No taste to the food. You can see sometimes 10 people are there and nine people are saying what a fantastic food it is. But if you are saying, oh, I can't feel the taste to the food, that means your Agni is at compromise level. And the last, that is the 10th symptom and in Ayurveda as mentioned, is total fatigue. Day and night, mental and physical fatigue. 
this is a very dangerous stage that your agni is already burdened with a lot of toxins in your now in the management we have to think about the diet lifestyle medication panchakarma fasting yoga and meditation so when we are thinking about this this is very important your gut is very important don't treat your gut like a gutter so like don't fill up your stomach like a garbage bag don't do like this type of things because this is very frequently seen in the waste here there is one paper on the sugar that artificial the sugar and artificial sweet and beverages is having the risk of uh, uh, in the strokes and dementia but of course as i said it is responsible for the inflammation which can lead to all the above mentioned problems what we have discussed until yet so diet is the first pillar of the life life of course there are three pillars of the life which all uh, many uh, speakers uh, before me already said the three pillars of the life that is the diet sleep and the brahmacharya but the diet the food should be treated as a medicine and that's why dietary prescription for a metabolic syndrome is very important eat warm and fresh food actually i don't have time right now because this uh, when uh, we lecture in the west this question comes to us you are saying what uh, eat warm and fresh food but it is not possible in the west because we don't have time so we have one solution for that but we will uh, if time allows then i will share it later try to consume only two or three times a day in fact in ayurveda it has been mentioned once a meal is fantastic you don't need more than that but practically it is not possible for everyone so generally we say two meals per day is fantastic so don't have any breakfast or if you have to have a breakfast you can just have a glass of maybe juices of the vegetables and some nuts but not fruit juice i am talking about because fruit juice can cause much much more problems with the liver that we will discuss later then eat 3/4 of your capacity when you feel that you are still having hunger to eat one more chapati or one more bread you have to stop at that point because that allows the agni to work and the vata to work and the main mantra i always see say in all my lecture eat less this is the very good mantra for your health eat less now lunch lunch should be the main meal of the day it should not it should contain salad mixed with the nuts vegetable lentils beans grains and thin butter milk dinner should be as light as possible preferably before 7 pm would be always preferable in india sometimes people are taking dinner very late and some i have mentioned that preferably khichdi like rice and dal together you are cooking maybe barley khichdi is also good in metabolic syndrome quinoa khichdi or hand pounded rice buckwheat khichdi these are or vegetable soups or lentil soups they are very good because all these things when you eat in less amount early and light this allows your digestive fire to kindle more and this allows your digestive fire to digest the toxins some prescription of this uh, dietary things as i said in the grains barley quinoa ragi in the be- beans almost all except uh, generally we say that uh, kidney beans you have to be a little bit careful especially in the evening then all vegetables except the potato because potato is one of the vegetable which is little bit more difficult to digest it has a lot of vata and it has also high glycemic index then nuts almonds walnuts pistachios sunflower seeds pumpkin seeds here i would like to highlight only one thing because as i am talking uh, for canada and indian and all other uh, country people also you get the macadamia that is one of the nut which is very heavy and i have seen maximum people those who are having complaint of gases and bloating and if you say them to take out the macadamia and they get the magic results because it is very heavy for the digestion and that's why we have to be careful then oil any oil which is unrefined is always important then 
in the dairy only cow ghee or thin buttermilk and all spices are advised of course if you have certain problems with the pitta if it is too much then you have to concern the doctors or the ayurvedic physician very interesting i i wanted to share this i just got this from yesterday from my one of my friend dr saurabh chokshi he is a cardiologist in tampa and his wife dr mm-hmm. sheila chokshi so uh, he sent me this and this is very interesting it is published on february 24th of this year just february 24 and it says the glycemic index and glycemic load if the things you eat it which is having high glycemic index and high glycemic load that will create the problem especially with the cardiovascular system and that's why i am mentioning here the barley because ayurveda has mentioned to eat barley in diabetes in obesity in heart disease so i just sometimes think why ayurveda has mentioned 5000 years before and now you can see if i would like to say here the barley the barley has glycemic index which is plus or minus 28 glycemic index is only 5.2 it has lot of magnesium which is very good for the heart muscles so 5000 years before the rishis or the sages they were already having the knowledge of this and that's why it was mentioned so avoid all inflammatory foods such as sugar as we have said tea coffee alcohol sweet too much spices animal product pack, packaged food then deep frozen food deep fried food refined carbohydrates carbonated drinks very important sweetened beverages and trans fat honey everybody is using especially in the west it is used with the teas with the infusion in baking in cooking ayurveda says it is better to avoid that because when honey is cooked baked or even consumed during hot afternoon then it creates the toxins in the physiology even the name of the toxin has been given in charak sanhita it is called madhuama and now it has been said if you google this honey has hmf hydroxymethyl furfural this is the organic compound when it is getting heated it works like a toxic and it leads to the carcinogenic effect now fasting most important we generally use fasting very much in fact most of my uh, metabolic syndrome patient i really use this of course there are many kinds of fasting it has been mentioned but we generally say fasting once a week or two times a week like intermittent fasting whatever is mentioned in fact panchakarma four karmas out of five karmas is mentioned as a fasting exercise is mentioned as a fasting and all the fasting what you can do is always better so always try to give rest to your uh, agni or the digestive fire so fasting reduces increase dosha kindles agni and it is a powerful tool for diabetes which i really experienced with my patients so many patients go off the pills and the medication of course autophagy everybody knows that 2016 the prize uh, the nobel prize goes to yoshinori osumi from japan different types of fasting has been mentioned intermittent fasting like 16 8 that means 16 hour gap and 8 8 uh, hours window one meal a day alternate day fasting many things intermittent fasting has been mentioned i will not uh, read this uh here only i would like to highlight just few minutes i know uh, very few minutes are remain but still i would like to uh, say this uh because if you eat uh, refined carbohydrate high glycemic food sugar all these generate the free radicals everybody knows that as it is shown in the figure apple goes oxidized when it is open to the oxygen the same thing for the cell this uh, food will create the free radicals and attack it and then you would get the problems like a carcinoma or something like that now uh, there is one suggestion or prescription we always give to all our patients is that always do this type of things first day take the thin soup like kanji or the rice broth second day you can take thin thicker soup third day some semi solid fourth day 
semi solid like khichdi and keep the day the normal diet and you can generally uh, follow it maybe once in a month two uh, two times in a month would be always good so periodic liquid diet is also beneficial now the lifestyle of course yoga meditation everybody knows because this is the main base for uh, mind body and consciousness coordination reduces rajas and tamas qualities mm, meditation of course calm down the mind reduces really i mean uh, the inflammation in the body because it reduces it allows sympathetic nervous system to go down so it is important then pranayama is very important i would like to share here in my patients with high anxiety i use anulom vilom pranayama and it works like a magic bullet so uh, just few minutes i will mention wake up early in the morning like between 4:30 to 6 am why this is because if you see most of the heart attacks are happening uh, since morning until 10 o'clock if you ask the cardiologists they will say so why it is happening because the morning time at this particular time the catecholamine especially and the cortisol all these are elevating this create the stress and that will affect on your heart so ayurveda says you have to wake up at 4:30 or brahma muhurta of course it is not practically possible then we say wake up as early as possible to avoid this type of incidences see how practically it has been mentioned in the text 5000 years before then attend your nature, uh, nature's call brushing teeth drink warm uh, water gargling self oil massage having very good effect on your heart i don't have time to explain but it is always uh, advisable then take your lunch between 10 to 2 because uh, there is a strength from the sun in the universe which gives strength to our digestive fire that is digestive juices and enzymes then evening your yoga meditation practice like in the morning early dinner and go to bed by 10 o'clock because you know when you are awake and when you are in front of computer or in front of your screen of the mobile then that will stop the melatonin secretion which won't allow you to get the good sleep so this also create the inflammation and the stress of course uh, this is the circadian rhythm at, uh, so it is important that you have to have the sleep for 7 to 8 hours then avoid smoking control emotions avoid drinking alcohol excessive traveling excessive thinking and excessive exercise panch karma most important especially the bastis works very well to reduce all this metabolic syndrome we have so many patients we treat with the panch karma a lot and of course it is completely individualized completely individualized as i was talking to dr harish ji only four or five people we take because it is so intense that every day you have to monitor the pulse and you have to see where the doshas are going and then you have to apply the procedure and the diet itself to if it's of panchakarma it enhances your self mechanism healing mechanism but most important re establishes coordination between mind body and consciousness and of course we always say if you have a car you give it for servicing for what because the engine engine should not get rusted and it should not stuck down on the highway so the same principle is applied to our physiology so we have to be careful so we can eliminate the toxins and panchakarma already there are few herbs now this is the last thing i want to mention is some herbs which we use that uh pashan bait gokshur varun punarnava this first four herbs we generally use it in the form of decoction to all our patient with this type of syndrome and it works beautifully then other herbs kutti arjuna pushkarmula chanda shunti ginger powder ginger powder is very good for the heart then guduchi of course uh, tinespora cardifolia is one of the best herb nowadays in pandemic situation this is also advisable harita ki kira tikt chandra prabhavati rasayan chur no so many things of course now we need to ask some question to ourselves do we eat when we are hungry when we eat are we really hungry how frequently we eat and what we eat do we sleep when we are sleepy and most importantly am i happy
and this is the most important what you eat is extremely important but what eats you is even more important because this is directly connected to agni and it is directly connected to each and every thing so thank you so much and uh, generally uh, uh, this is a very small topic but i wanted to uh, i mean it's a big topic i wanted to uh, uh, cover in small time uh, but still we actually give a big seminar or a course on this metabolic syndrome in fact we have given a few years before in europe this so uh, i tried my level best to cover all the topics in this short period of the time but thank you very much for inviting me it's an honor uh thank you so very much uh, uh, vedya sanjay ji and it was a so fascinating uh, very very insightful presentation as you rightly said it's a sea deep uh, science and uh, covering in one hour is just just a a, a kind of small drop uh, the knowledge and the wisdom we are trying to cover of course we we are limited with a uh, time and uh, unfortunately we won't be able to entertain some more questions but uh, for all of our audience i just want to uh, reiterate that we are uh, creating an ayurvedic co community here all over uh, accomplished speaker which you have experienced in the past and in the future also you will be please do uh, share us your feedback your comments your questions uh, dr verma is with us uh, he himself is an authority on ayurveda and we'll try to cover that uh, through uh, through emails or any other mode of communication and but do uh, connect with us and do spread this passage further and uh, now i would like to invite our very special uh, guest uh, dr oh sorry mpp logan kanpati uh, he could not join in the uh, morning in the beginning session but he joined uh, us uh, thank you uh, dr uh, mpp logan i know you are very busy and thank you for taking time out to, to uh, from your busy schedule to join us and uh, please please share some of your thoughts with us uh, thank you thank you uh, satish uh, takar and good morning and namaste and and uh, you know I'm, i'm 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 not busy for you guys you are you are my my good friends and my colleagues and wonderful things you are doing i have to thank you dr sanjay kulkarni so uh, i very physician oh my goodness i learned something today i was i was listening almost uh, almost 45 minutes 50 minutes and and his in depth in depth knowledge and passion and uh, enlightening us in the even though my wife is a medical doctor in markham uh, family physician for 20 years and uh, i learned so many things and i always support always always encourage our indigenous ayurvedic medicine is a natural medicine thank you uh, uh, chair and i like to thank you to the all the foundation members and and the, all the wonderful people uh, being here and and all the listeners Uh, this is special event wouldn't be happening uh, uh, as such is uh, you know that you have such is my good friend and wonderful leader uh, since his information the canada india foundation uh, has done outstanding work in canada i know i know you guys for a long time uh, not only in canada abroad globally the canada india foundation help foster healthy relationship between canada and india uh, you are also an advocate for strong two way great uh, investment between canada and india uh, we will let uh, the india trade mission such as you remember along with your friends uh, so you support india and you come to canada uh, you are locally you have worked with indo canadian community to engage community members in all level of government that's how i met you uh, previous life as a counselor for syria markham uh you guys uh did so many things even you are living other part of markham and you 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 embrace the ontarian and canadian uh through your humanitarian mission uh during the early month uh, i'm not going to speak only i'm going to speak two three minutes uh, psychic don't worry about that <laughs> uh, during the early month of covid-19 pandemic the canada indian foundation spearhead the thank you meal initiative you know you remember you, know, you call me and you donated so many food including markham stove hospital volunteers and donors from the indo canadian community partnership with the uh, uh, tam tamra and indian bistro restaurant delivered 15000 meals to our frontline heroes including healthcare workers police firefighters and essential care givers through your hard work and generosity 
the Canada India Foundation bring people together and improve the life within the Indo Canadian community and beyond. You know, and thank you for including me and your passionate work. Uh, the Canada India Foundation also organized healthcare related event like Canada India Healthcare Summit and webinar, uh, webinars like uh, today. Uh, even like these are important because they are provide members of Indo Canadian community with expert information on different health condition and issue. And I even is uh, today's informative events is a, is a testament for that. Uh, this give people the tool they need to be advocate for their own health and leaders in their communities. As the spouse of the family of family physician, I have learned firsthand about how important it is to share trustworthy, culturally relevant information when it's come to our health. Uh, today we are lucky to have with the Dr. Sanjay Kulkarani, who will be speaking. Yeah, he spoke very eloquently, and, and thank you. And he's from Canada, or is uh, sorry, he's from America or India? Uh, he no, I'm from, from India. Pudel. India, oh my God, yes. it's great. And, and thank you, and uh, thank you, Sam. thank you, uh, thank you so much, and uh, thank you for for inviting me, Satis, and, and thank you to all your members and. We will, uh, one day we'll see you face to face in person and maybe I can learn more from Dr. Sanchez Ji. I say Sanchez Ji and maybe I'll invite my wife and she's- uh, most welcome. Uh, she will learn from you and we could share the, the it's, it's a knowledge share. And thank you. And thank you to all my Indian brothers and sisters and, and I hope you are well during this difficult time. And thank you for connecting me, uh, Yatis. Thank you, thank you so much. Namaste again. Thank you, MPP Logan Ganpati, for your uh, leadership and your friendship. Thank you for joining. And uh, now I would like to invite uh, our national convener, uh, Ritesh Malik, to give the concluding remark. Ritesh, over to you. Uh, thank you, Sudesh ji. Namaste, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Vedya Sanjay Kulkarni ji, for your informative and detailed presentation on Ayurvedic management of metabolic syndrome. I'm sure audience uh, will immensely benefit from this content rich discussion today and understand how this can be avoided and cured with Ayurvedic techniques. Uh, this is one of the major health issues in North America society due to lifestyle and food habits here, as you rightly pointed it out. Uh, we would also like to thank a close friend of Canada India Foundation, MPP Logan Kanapati for joining us on Sunday morning today. A special thanks to all the viewers for joining us virtually in Canada and overseas. We'll appreciate your feedback and suggestions to make this series more beneficial for you. You can write to us at info at canadaindiafoundation.com. Also, we would like to thank our partners, Canadian Ayurvedic Practitioners Association, Vedic Spiritual Heritage Foundation, and Consulate General of India to support this initiative. Thank you to Channel Y for covering this program live. Friends, please stay in tune for our next Ayurvedic speaker series webinar on fundamentals of pharmaceutics by Hisedje Kalpna on Sunday, 28th March, 2021. Our expert speaker for this session would be Dr. J.B. Heber. Please stay connected with us. Stay safe, stay healthy. Namaste. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Namaskar.